Hey everyone and welcome. In this video we'll be looking at how to create custom collisions inside of Blender 2.8 and this will be specifically for the Unreal Engine. So I already have some assets ready to go so that I can show a quick kind of demonstration and you can really apply this to any assets that you want and I'll show you a couple of different ways that these can be applied. So the first we have our barrel which will be used just to show the very simple single collision using a convex collision. And then we have a table, and this will allow me to show you how to set up collision for something which has multiple parts, which is going to require a set of different collisions, still using the convex shape. So I've also made a video very similar to this in the past, and people kind of struggled with that for some reason and didn't quite get some of the concepts and had issues creating their own custom collisions. So what I'd recommend as well is that you do check out the official documentation here. So I'll link this in the description below. This will give you a good breakdown of what will and will not work. Specifically here we have the shapes which do not work. So when we're making convex collisions, which is what we'll be doing now, this will show you that if you try to make something with a hole or a gap where the edges are not connecting at certain points, then you will have issues where your collision will not work. It's also going to show you that you have the caveats and considerations that you can run through just to make sure that you haven't taken some missteps here. And also if you ever forget the naming convention, then this will show you the full naming convention that you need as well. So like I said, if you follow along with video, something still doesn't work, just come back, take a quick look at the documentation here, and this should hopefully answer any of the questions and resolve any of the issues that you are finding. Okay, so back inside of Blender, the first thing we're going to do is the barrel. So I'm just going to create another cylinder, which is roughly the same shape and size as the barrel. This doesn't have to be exact. And this is where you have some freedom when you're making these collisions. So you can see how I'm going through and choosing a few different sizes, changing the face count here. So it doesn't need to be exact. We can make this even more simplified than the bow. The main thing that I want to achieve is to avoid representing the rings. So this will be for a game where you're not going for kind of accurate physics simulation, because of course those metal rings around the outside would add some extra collision detail, which would otherwise be noticeable. All I'm doing is going for the general silhouette, so I'm making sure that we have the kind of wider middle and that everything is pretty much wrapped around as close as possible. So this means if for kind of general collisions and things, this would work perfectly well. I'm then resetting the all of the transforms so we have the uh, uniform one scaling and the location set at the correct pivot point. So the important thing here is once we have the barrel shape ready, so the uh, representation of the collision, we need to rename this. So the only thing we need to do is add a UCX for the custom convex collision, so UCX, then underscore, then the full name of the static mesh. So for my naming convention, I'm following the Unreal naming conventions so as SM for static mesh, underscore, the name of the object. So you need the whole thing, not just the word barrel. So it's going to be SM underscore barrel with UCX underscore prefixed to that. With that done, we just simply select both of the objects and then we export these using your standard exporting options in Blender as an FBX and save that to a location of your choice. And I've just gone for the desktop and I'll be showing you how we can bring this into the engine and how this looks a little bit later. Next then we have the table. You can see here this is a lot more complex. So if we were to use complex collisions on this, as in taking every single point of the mesh, you can see I've got kind of nicks and grooves in the table. We don't really need that to be represented in the engine. That will add a lot of extra complexity that we don't need. So this is the kind of thing that we want to get rid of. Just back over to documentation quickly. We are not able to use things which will have holes or gaps in the, uh, in the joins. So this means that we wouldn't be able to represent this as one single object. So what we want to do instead is I'm going to create a few shapes which are roughly following the dimensions and shape of the table. So I'm going to start with the tabletop. This is just going to be a cube. I'm going to add an edge loop here so that I can follow the uh, kind of stylized shape of the middle of the table that I've gone for and then just scale the ends and the sides to get the, again, the general silhouette or outline of the table that we have. What I'm doing here, when I have the first part scaled as I want, I'm just going to copy the SM underscore table because again, this needs to be exact. I don't want any spelling mistakes. So I'll copy the name there and I'm going to rename my cube to UCX underscore and then paste in the SM underscore table. And then because we're going to have multiple collision parts for this table, you then follow that by underscore zero one. So part one of the custom collision that you're making. Next, I'm going to focus on the table legs. So I'm going to create another cube 
just scale this down roughly and I'm going to go into object mode with the pivot point so it's still in the middle. I'm going to go and add a modifier and this will be the mirror modifier and I'm just going to set this to mirror in the X and the Y. So this will kind of give me roughly why I want them to be the four table legs. And again, this is slightly more uh, inconvenient because I went for a very stylized effect here. So everything's kind of wobbly and out of place. So I'm going to place one of the legs roughly in place, scale that to roughly fit the, uh, the first leg that I'm looking at here. And then I'll just go back and change the other three legs when I have the first one ready. Now again, you can spend a lot more time on this than I will in the video. This is just for demonstration purposes, so you'd want to make this as accurate and fitting as possible. Whilst again, kind of maintaining that low vertex fidelity. And in the video, if you're interested in what I'm doing here, I'm just going through selecting all of the different pieces, pressing P to separate and then separate by selection so that I can make this one cube object that I've applied the mirror modifier to four separate legs. So we're going to get four different cubes. So again, this is important that these are all being separated because these are not touching each other and it's not one whole object. This wouldn't work as a convex collision if we tried making the table legs all one piece. So we need these to be separate. You can see that I'm just replacing and kind of scaling them back up. And then I'm going to copy the UCX underscore SM underscore table underscore zero one objects name here. And I'm just gonna paste those back over the other objects, so all of the legs and just change the number at the end to be 02, 03, and 04. So again, all of these have a unique name. So when you're making a collision with multiple parts, you just add the ascending numbers to the end of the names. And then just like with the barrel object, you just want to select all of the collisions and the object that they are the uh, colliding object for. And with all of those selected, once again, we just export these to a destination of your choice. And for me, this was the desktop. And to show this working, I'm just going to head over to the Unreal Engine. I'll import these as standard. So I'll find their location, import these in as static meshes, not skeletal meshes. And then I'll just drag these into the, uh, the demo level that I have here. And to get an idea of what the collision looks like, I'm just going to go to the drop down at the top, change that from lit to player collision. And we can see here with the kind of turquoisey green color, the barrel has the very simple, I think it was 12 sided cylinder with an extrusion in the middle or an edge loop, which is scaled in the middle. And the table has the top and the four legs. But it, you can see from the collision that if you wanted to have something go under the table or uh, navigate around it, that would this collision would give you that full kind of flexibility to do that. So with the static meshes open, if we go into the collision details, just a quick example of what you would have had if you didn't do it this way. You can see here, Using the uh, the freebird options, you would have had something for the table like this cube. I can't remember which one it uses by default, but it would have just been a cube which completely surrounds the table. So that wouldn't have allowed you to go under it or had any flexibility around that. And again, if things were colliding with it, it would have looked as though the collision was coming from kind of an empty point in space underneath the table legs, which can look a little bit weird. And then if I turn on the complex collision so again this turquoisey blue color you can see that where this is uh, going around the static mesh and being drawn this would be all of the points which are going to be classed as a collision and a bit of uh, collision information in the world and that is every single edge and vert of the table which is going to be way too high if you're doing this for lots of different objects and it's just overkill for this type of object so something you generally want to avoid doing is using the complex as simple inside of the engine and creating these kind of highly complex collision shapes. Uh, instead, what you can do is like I've just shown you, just add a few different custom collision objects to something like a table or just that one single collision object to the barrel. And that will give you fairly accurate, but much cheaper custom colliders inside of Unreal. So hopefully that's all made sense. Like I've said, we can just use a single UCX collision representation on a simple object like a barrel, or this would extend to things like rocks. Most very kind of simple props like light stands and things like that can all be one object as long as there are no breaks in the, the edges and no loops or holes within the object. Then for slightly more complex things like tables where you've got legs which are extruding out, as that would create a gap, you then just simply use multiple UCX colliders. So with that done, I'll leave the video here. As always, if you enjoyed the video or found it useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps and is greatly appreciated. And of course, I do release at least one video per week covering a variety of topics around game design, 3D art, and the Unreal Engine. 
So if you wanted to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel, do be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to make sure that you get those updates. If you wanted to support the channel and what I do to allow me to keep making more content just like this, then do consider checking out the Patreon page. Links for that can be found in the description down below. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.